Hamilton was hugely helpful because without them, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know, I mean, would we have lived in my car? I don't know. Ah, uh, without Hamilton, I don't think we would be able to accomplish much, as much as we accomplish now. Experiencing homelessness, I never thought I would experience that, but a place like Hamilton Family Center is a lifeline for families who are, who have no options. The year is 1985, and Hamilton Family Center opens its doors in the basement of a church with a desire to help homeless families living on the streets of San Francisco. Salvador Menjivar, an early executive director, and Bob Pallas, a Hamilton board member, both joined the organization in the early 90s. But it was like nothing they'd ever been involved with before. When I first walked in this building, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I'd never been on a board of directors before. I showed up at this building, and at the time, uh, it was only open for people to come in off the streets and sleep on the floor. There were no programs of any sort. And what really got to me is the little kids who had absolutely nothing, and yet at this Christmas time, it was just beyond belief for me. And one of the biggest challenges for shelters at that time was a lack of resources. Just the simple operation of providing the basic you know, showers, meals, a clean bed, uh, that into itself uh, was a huge challenge. It was a very difficult situation. Despite the challenges, Salvador quickly went to work reorganizing to better serve the families at the shelter. At the same time, Hamilton saw the children struggling tremendously. And with a heart to care for these vulnerable kids, Hamilton knew that innovative and supportive programs were needed. So, several new organizations were incubated from the new shelter. And a favorite for many of the kids at Hamilton is HomeAway's Beach House. Well, Hamilton was actually one of HomeAway's first funders, and it was recognized that the kids who were currently living in Hamilton didn't have as much opportunity as others might be to get out of the city and to play and to explore the natural world. And so that's what the Beach House is, is able to provide. As Hamilton began reshaping the shelter, the one thing they realized they couldn't reshape was the amount of space they had to work with. We're in the room where the families would sleep. They would sleep on bunk beds. And when I say family would sleep on bunk beds, oftentimes it would be a mom and her two kids on one little narrow bunk bed. And the only thing that provided privacy is they would hang a sheet to separate them from the bunk bed immediately next to them. Kind of tight living quarters. And we had about a hundred people at times sleeping in this room and the room next door. And so if you can imagine, uh, there were beds that were, um, you know, just going in that direction. And then you had a space, and then you had another row of beds, and then you had more beds against the wall here. So you, you literally had beds in every single um, space. The basketball uh, court that we had during the winter time uh, there were a few years when we had such a big amount of homeless families that we actually had to create an emergency of an emergency shelter and, and we had families sleeping all over this uh, gymnasium. It was packed. It was, it was, you know, that was uh, one of the issues. As Hamilton grew, they began to notice that some families needed a little more time and focused support to get themselves stable before they could move into housing. A new type of programming and more space was needed. So, in 1995, Hamilton purchases land just north of the Panhandle near Haight-Ashbury. And five years later, in 2000, the Hamilton Transitional Housing Program opens its doors. This is a unit at our Transitional Housing Program. This unit would be for a family of five or six. 
um, and families can stay here for a period of 12 to 18 months. This is a time for families to really stabilize, become self-sufficient with the support of staff members on site. It's a really strong community, a really strong safety net, everything from intensive case management, workshops, um, parenting, stress reduction, and also an intensive children's program that provides homework help, art therapy, field trips, really opportunities for kids to just be kids. The vaccines and the antibiotics were the hardest part of this test. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I teach high school. I, have, I own my own home. So in a few weeks, it will be two years that I, I have owned this lovely little place. But that wasn't always the case for Matt Rice and his severely autistic son, Blake. In 2001, Matt was hit with a series of events that would change his life dramatically. I was living in San Francisco, and, and so within three months, I lost my job as a network engineer. My partner and I broke up, and he asked us to leave the house, and, and my son was diagnosed with autism in three months. So we ended up without a place to go. It was, a, it was a really tough time. I was just stuck in this place where I didn't have any money to pay someone to watch my kid so I could get a job, but I needed a job so I could pay someone to watch my kid. At the same time, my son was being diagnosed with autism. He was just, he cried seven or eight hours a day. Come on, let's go. It was a nightmare. After couch surfing with some friends and passing through shelters, Matt found out about Hamilton's transitional housing program and made it in. Determined to finish his college education, Matt qualified for financial aid and enrolled at San Francisco State University and eventually graduated getting his biology degree. A new life began for Matt and Blake, all while staying at Hamilton. When I first came in, it was just such a huge relief to have a place where I could close the door, do my homework, take care of my kid. I had my own bathroom and my own kitchen. And the staff was really supportive and they didn't know a lot about kids with autism then, but they were all totally supportive and willing to learn. And, and the Hamilton after school people were amazing. It was hard to get them to come home. For me, it was the beginning of a much better life. But I'm really thankful because Hamilton was there to help me pick up the pieces. And that made all the difference. Recognizing that families at the original emergency shelter needed much more than a place to stay, Hamilton continued on its path of innovative thinking. Not long after the transitional housing program opened, Hamilton opened up a new shelter in the Tenderloin, where families can stay between three to six months. And we found that when families are staying in these bunks, in these rooms, there's much more stability. They're able to seek employment, they're able to register their kids for school, uh, they're able to start looking for housing, and that is our goal, to get them into housing as quickly as possible. Case management services are offered for all of our clients, um, as well as housing uh, services, employment services. We have um, a really spectacular children's program that does a lot to, um, you know, a lot to address the trauma that children experience when they're homeless. We serve meals for our families there. We have uh, three meals a day. And in 2006, what was left of the Waller program moved over to the Tenderloin site. These beds mean that families aren't spending the night on the street. You know, families that are spending time in parks, sometimes in their cars, uh, you know, they've maxed out the goodwill of their family and friends, and this is truly the last resort for them. So, like us, we get the blanket and the sheet and find the nearest park, the biggest tree, in case it rains from the elements, and sleep there and freeze all night. It's really stressful. It's it's just hard. It's hard. Regina and her husband Talmadge lost their jobs, their apartment, and have been homeless for nearly two years. Before finding Hamilton, Regina says getting a job was basically impossible. 
Yeah. It's been the hardest thing ever because you don't have any foundation to go apply for a job because your living situation. So if you are living on the street, how are you going to go to a job? How are you going to get dressed every day? How are you going to take your kids to childcare so you can go on the interviews? And just me being in Hamilton, during that time I was able to get a job. And I not only got one job, but I got two jobs. So that was a blessing. That's a major blessing. Even with a bigger location, Hamilton still has to turn away families in need. Hamilton Emergency, this is Tony. How can I help you? Uh, currently, we are full. The need is so great. We only have so many beds, and it fills up pretty quickly. To me, it's just like really frustrating to inform the families that we can't provide them what they need. It really hit home for me after about my first month of work. I was talking to the director of our shelter and looking at the list of people who we had to turn away for shelter. And I saw that one of the families that we turned away was one of my daughter's classmates. This isn't a problem that just is affecting anonymous people. There's homeless kids in every single school in this city. This affects my family, it affects my children, it affects all of us. As Hamilton grew, they began to look at how other programs throughout the country addressed the issue of family homelessness and began to ask lots of questions, questions that challenged the status quo. Up until, I would say, 2000, there is a very big focus on the therapy component, like how are we going to fix these families? They are dysfunctional, they, there is something wrong with them. Instead, we concluded after doing a lot of interviews and, and a lot of research that most of these families, at least 80% of them, are homeless because of economics. So, Hamilton opened up a new program that pioneered the housing first approach in San Francisco. And the, the idea of focusing on a housing first model, recognizing that shelter solves sleep, housing with wraparound and support services uh, solve homelessness. And at the time, let me assure you, uh, that was not, I don't want to call it radical thinking, but it was certainly on the edge of thinking. And there was a lot of blowback in 2004, 2005, 2006. And that was the courage of the board of directors at Hamilton. It was the courage of Salvador to say, you know what, we can do more and do better, and to embrace that model, which, not surprisingly, has become a national model and has proven itself to work. The Housing First model is run out of Hamilton's First Avenues program, where the move-in assistance, rental subsidies, and eviction prevention programs are located. These services connect families to housing opportunities and help them get back on their feet. Uh, without Hamilton, I don't think we would be able to accomplish much. But through Hamilton and, you know, with their support and help, now we got our own place. Since the very beginning, Hamilton could see the devastating mental, physical, and emotional effects homelessness has on children. If you didn't have Hamilton, where would you be? On the streets. To sleep in a room with strange people they don't know is not fair. Hamilton has been dedicated in helping children who have experienced a lot of trauma feel what every child deserves to feel. <laughs> Special. Today is our annual teen empowerment. It's to kick off spring break every year for the kids and to engage the teens. We have career panels, college readiness workshops. Um, as you can see, they're getting their hair and makeup done behind me. Every year, Macy's and Bloomingdale's is a huge part of this, and they have their makeup artists here. They have goodie bags for every kid that is part of this day, and they're always really engaged in our community. Oh my god, it's so pretty. For a brief period of time, me and my mom were in a shelter for a little bit, and we were living in a car for a little while, and uh, you know, didn't know what we were going to do. So I feel like this is a great opportunity for me to give back. 
Byron, Beth and Red's son, enjoyed Hamilton's children's program so much, he decided to give back. So far, ever since we moved, I've been there three times so far as, a as like an actual volunteer now. Hamilton is like a really big part of my family. They've grown into my like heart as like brothers, sisters and stuff like that. All of the work and all of the accomplishments throughout the years simply would not be possible without the support from thousands in the community. One of the great things about Hamilton Family Center are all the volunteers who contribute to our work. We have people coming from companies almost on a daily basis to help out. We have people who come in on a weekly basis to read to our children. We have an amazing board made up of volunteers who spend hours and hours every week working on the organization. We have great staff. Thank you for doing this amazing work and for being part of this 30-year history of Hamilton Family Center. And of course, the other ingredient, um, the fuel that's driving this forward is, is money. And I'm so blessed to be an executive director in a city um, that is so incredibly generous. Hamilton is an incredible resource in our community and in the city of San Francisco. And they provide an extraordinary amount of hope to families when they are in times of crisis. I think Jeff has a crazy but fantastic vision of being able to end family homelessness in San Francisco within the next three years. And I know if there's anybody that can do it, um, Hamilton can. So Twitter has been involved with Hamilton Family Services in a lot of ways. We have employees that are volunteering there, uh, giving back, helping out uh, with their Earth Day events, helping out with the family shelter, working on their social media strategy. I ought to say that I think Hamilton's been a great partner for Twitter. What Hamilton does is incredibly thoughtful and incredibly comprehensive and incredibly impactful because Hamilton has an incredible track record of making great impact and helping families get out of poverty, get out of homelessness. And it's not just about Hamilton Family Center and our donors. We also have been working with the city of San Francisco and the state of California and the federal government to bring more resources to bear to this problem. And they have been incredibly supportive and incredibly cooperative. And so I'm so proud to see Hamilton Family Center at its 30th anniversary be really recognized as a leader here in City Hall, always focusing on legislation and funding and policy to support families. And so I can't imagine facing the challenges that we faced in homelessness and family homelessness without Hamilton Family Center right at our side and taking the leadership that our city needs. Hamilton and its programs had proven success, but the leadership team knew they had to take those programs to the next level to better serve the families. So in 2014, Hamilton participated in the Morgan Stanley Strategy Challenge. Morgan Stanley worked with the staff of Hamilton um, for a thousand hours um, over a summer to really analyze the program and our you know, analysis pointed to yes, um, this program already works, there are ways to improve it, and we outlined some specific ways to improve it. Hamilton implemented the improvements and, along with citywide efforts, cut the San Francisco waitlist in half by June of 2015. And Hamilton, in the past quarter, housed almost as many families as they had housed all of last year. It was tons of work, but work that achieved great results. Like this is working folks. We have cut the list down by 50% through tried and true strategies that really just need to be operated consistently at the right scale and we can make it so kids aren't homeless for more than 30 days or 60 days or 90 days at the most. That's really what we should be striving for and, and we're getting there. The fact is Hamilton's proven the point. You can solve family homelessness. You don't just have to manage it. The question is can we commit ourselves to doing it at the scale the issue and the challenge requires. Uh, Hamilton is truly one of the most extraordinary organizations, not just in the Bay Area and San Francisco, across the state, and I can speak for the rest of the state, uh, but arguably the rest of the country. This isn't just some pie in the sky thing that we're talking about. No, we actually are going to do this. The best thing that I think could happen is that our, our 60th year anniversary, we're closing the doors because we've solved the problem of family homelessness. And Hamilton is driving towards that goal of ending family homelessness in San Francisco. Mm -hmm.